God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Amen. I want to hit on, uh, you know, the fact that people are talking about the gay issue. And I, w I don't want you to think that I'm being insensitive of any gay person or a bashing in the negative. All right. If, if there's any such thing as bashing in the positive. So then in that case, it can't be positive that I'm not bashing. Now, what's happening is this. What people, what I, what inclined me, what made me want to do this video is because of the fact that so many people are gay, homosexual, and uh, they're using the scriptures to say that it's okay, and I have a problem with that. If the Bible talks again against it, now we have people graduating from theological seminary or cemetery, as I say, cemetery, and they're twisting the scriptures just like Galatians said, who has bewitched you, Satan? So the entitle of this is, it doesn't even matter. Homosexuality is wrong. Man with man, woman with woman. If you can go to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18 and say that God said it's not good for man to be alone, he made a woman, why would you come up and say that man's supposed to be with man and woman's supposed to be with woman sexually? If that's not what God did, why would you do that? Why would you use the scripture? It's one thing to be homosexual. And let me just touch on the fact of the homosexuals that have been raped. I, I, I sympathize, sympathize with anyone that has been raped, man or woman, by any, whether, you, whether it was a heterosexual person or a homosexual person. Now, some people have been raped and seduced into the homosexual spirit by victimizers. You are the victim of somebody being a homosexual. Somebody raped you. Somebody molested you. But that didn't make you a homosexual. You didn't become a homosexual because of their act on you. You only became a homosexual when you opened yourself to consenting to the same sex. See, when somebody's violating you, that's not you being that. And I don't care what the devil told you. Oh, you're a homosexual now. Go ahead and live that homosexual life because somebody violated you or somebody raped you. No. But at the same time, when you consent to it, and you start looking for it or putting yourself in the place to be, in a place of accomplishing a sexual or homosexual act, now you're consenting to it. So again, I sympathize with any man or woman that has been taken advantage of by anyone, heterosexual or homosexual. Um, all right, we already said that Genesis, this is only going to be short because people don't like information anyway, and so we're going to make this as short and sweet if there's any such thing. But what hurt me as a heterosexual man, straight man, and I'm not, was men doing videos or doing movies or, or talk shows or whatever they do. And tell you that they're homosexual, but because they go to the gym, because they look masculine. And uh, they act masculine, other than being homosexual now. In other words, long as I can walk around buff, working on my biceps and my triceps, and keeping my chest and my shoulders and my back strong, walk like a man, talk like a man, because I am a man, that's why you have a penis, right? You're a man. These homosexual guys that are more masculine or like have a point finger at the guy that acts feminine. But masculine and gay or masculine and homosexual as a male, because we know homosexual covers in the female too. Any same sex homosexuality is going with the same sex. So it covers male and female. But I'm going to deal with the men because the men get their mind right, then we can get the women's mind right. But the men got to get their mind right. So you have men that are masculine but gay, or masculine and homosexual. Those, those, those words don't go again. Masculine and gay don't supposed to be in the same context. Masculine and gay, masculine and homo, masculine and... They, they don't go together. 
So now you have the masculine guy talking about the the more feminine guy. But you're both homosexual. You're both receiving penis in the butt or sucking on another man's phallus. Either or. Giving, taking, taking or giving, or either or is part of the same flow. Whether you say, I don't take, I give, or whether you say, I don't give, I take, or you give and take, or you don't take, but you give, you don't take, give, but you take. Whenever you are homosexual, you get sexual gratification from the same sex, man with man, woman with woman. But I'm primarily dealing with the men first because the sad point is, men, we are the leaders of the world. We are the image of God. And you have even brothers that like that who are in the gym or killers, fighters, masculine playing basketball, masculine playing sports, but they still are homosexual or gay. So that makes it you're the you're the better homosexual. You're the better gay person because you are walking around as masculine. Well there's nothing nothing masculine about being a homosexual. Nothing. So you're just as guilty. Homosexuality is homosexuality. Gay is gay. Of course, probably in the gay lifestyle, where they have their different differentiation of words and categories of words, you'll probably say gay man or gay woman doesn't deal bisexual. They don't deal with the opposite sex in no shape, form, or fashion. And then others differ. But when we talk about gay, we I don't care whether you deal with man and woman. If you're a man dealing with a man, you're homosexual. If you're a woman dealing with a woman, you're homosexual. And that's gay, whether you like it or not, whether you want to say, well, I'm not just gay. Well, homosexual and gay is synonymous, other than the, the definition of gay being giddy, laughing, you know what I mean, hilarious. But we're not talking about that, right? We're talking about homosexuality. So we'll stay within the contextual frame, contextual frame. Now, let's go to the book of, we went from Genesis chapter 218, where God made a man for a woman. I mean, made a woman for man, because man was here first, so he made not a man for a woman. He made a woman for the man. He didn't make another man. And I heard some, I don't know say, they saying that the Pink Cross Publishing Company is trying to produce a Bible for the gay, where all Jesus' disciples will be gay. And that's something that wouldn't be, I don't know if it's true or not. I tried to look it up. I couldn't find it. But I heard a popular guy who has a whole series of intelligence out there, if you would put it in that category. He said so. I don't know if it's true, though. Uh, let's go to Leviticus 20 and 13. The penalty for homosexual acts is death to both parties. Doesn't get no simpler than that. You can read all up from... Leviticus chapter 20 all the way down to the 13th verse, like the Lord gave Moses these further instructions for the people of Israel, anyone, whether an Israelite or a foreigner living among you who sacrifices his child as a burnt offering to the, to the devil or Malik shall without fail be stoned by his beard. And I myself will turn against that man and cut him off from all his people. Because he has given his child over to the devil, thus making my tabernacle unfit for me to live in and insulting my holy name. So all the things that it's going to be talking about from Leviticus 21 to 13, and, and, and I mean even to the end of the chapter, all through this, it's talking about the priest law, which makes God is insulting God. So when a man deals with a man, he's insulting God. Sin is a no, no, come on. I don't want y'all to think that I'm just, I'm talking about homosexuality because it's so rampant. And I don't think enough, maybe there are, I don't know. But I'm going to do, I just want to do a little bit of my part. Homosexual, you can be saved. You can be delivered. It's a sin. You trying to, some of y'all trying to get in the Bible and make it right. You, you, you come on and you come so humble and so sickening and, and so pitiful, like it's the love. Homosexuality is the devil's love, which is no love at all. Let me say that again. Homosexuality is the devil's love, which is no love at all. 
Now, that's not to say not to love a homosexual because you have to love the individual, but not the sin. That's just like if you got a gangbanger, a rapist, a murderer, every mother, every father that have not loved their child. You may not love what they're doing. So we as individuals, when we come to God, we love our neighbor, but we don't love what our neighbor is doing. But because of the love of, of God in us, we talk to you about what's wrong. Homosexuality is wrong. We can talk about uh, heterosexual sins of fornication and adultery. We're not saying those are any uh, less wrong. They're wrong. But most of them know that. And they have to ask God for deliverance and for husbands and wives, not a man asking God for a husband because husbands don't go with a man. Husbands go with a wife, a woman. Wives don't ask for a wife because wives go with a husband, which is another man. Now, we know in the heterosexual lifestyle, we got women talking about they're a husband. How can a woman be a husband? How can a man be a wife? we got homosexuals, guys walking around talking about, girl, you're not a girl. See, and you want us to accept that. You want to tell the heterosexuals that we should, don't tell you anything, but you want to tell us every day. You want to tell us, be homosexual. Or if you're not telling us to be homosexual, you're telling us don't say nothing to you while you try to change the world. Now you're talking about that's like slavery. No, human rights and homosexual rights is not the same thing. You have rights as a human being, but as a human being, you have the right to do the right thing. Living man with man and woman with woman, when I say living, I don't care if you live in the same house with a man and living because you could be brothers and sisters, but I'm talking about homosexual lifestyle is not intelligent, it's retarded. It's out of order. Homosexuality is the devil's love. That's what it is. The devil's love, which is not really love at all. Hey, it's to take you into hell. So we done read Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13 that says you would die. Now let's go to Leviticus 18 and I think it's 22. Let me see. Homosexuality is absolutely forbidden. For it is an enormous sin. Uh, it doesn't get in. That was Leviticus 18 and 22. Now, this is the Living Bible, which breaks it right down where you can get right to it. Then, I mean, I've seen, I've heard guys use the Bible, go through all the scriptures I can use. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 on. Uh, first uh, Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, 10, that says, No, you not. Listen to the scripture in First Corinthians 6. It says, Don't you know? That unrighteousness, the unrighteous shall not go into heaven. Then it talks about the effeminate man, the soft man, and it talks about the homosexual man. But you got people that read in the scripture and tell them, well, but, 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 and talking about, and here they go, let's, but let's take another look at the scripture. Now, here's the scripture, just like Luke 18, verse 22, it says, homosexuality is absolutely forbidden. Hold it now. Let's, let's go another way. We go to Genesis 2 18, where it says, God says it's not good for man to be alone. Let's make him a woman. Well, let's go another way. Right. You're going away from the word of God, away from the word of God. You're in it to twist it. That's what the devil's job is. And that's what I just came to tell you. No need making a big, long, drawn out thing about it. Because I can go on and on. But you, you're wrong. Homosexuality is wrong. If you want to live a homosexual life, you do have that right. If you want to die and go to hell, you have that right. But the idea of a straight man to the homosexual world is Jesus is calling you out of that. Dare you not stop lying and talking about you love Jesus and will not even try to repent of homosexuality. If you're claiming that you love Jesus and you practice in homosexuality without admitting that you're wrong, you're a liar and you're not telling the truth. Jesus said, why say you love me and do not what I tell you to do? That makes you a fool, Matthew chapter 7. Go to Matthew... Uh, uh, yeah, Matthew chapter 7, after verse 20, about 18 to 22. It talks about the fool that built their house on the rock. and went. So you hear the word, then you try to mix up and say, well, Leviticus and Genesis, then when we talk about Genesis 19, how God destroyed Solomon and Gomorrah, they'll try to, well, no, no, what they was doing, they was trying to rape. Whether they was trying to, it's rape when you consent into homosexual. Any man that's going to bed with another man, you're raping that man. Even if he consents, you're raping him. You're raping each other if both of you are doing it. 
You're out of God. That's satanic. Satan came up with man with man and woman with woman, not God. You can't go through this Bible and find nothing that condones homosexuality. You find it right while you're trying to twist the scripture. You read it and read it and then turn it to somebody. Yeah, it does say that God says you're not supposed to be a homosexual, but that was under the law. Then you go to the New Testament and you say, but you're making excuses. You're just changing the gospel. So homosexuality, along with other sins that we practice, is the devil's love, not God's love. It's that you're practicing the devil's love. You are practicing the devil's love. You're not practicing God's love. When you start practicing God's love, it'll mean you'll be practicing to be delivered from the sin. And if you can, out of your mouth, read the scriptures and say that, no, homosexuality is not a sin, you are a liar. You are a demonic liar. You're looking right at the scriptures and twisting, and that's what Romans chapter 1 is talking about. You knew the truth, you didn't love the truth, and you changed the truth, and now you got men going with men and women going with women. So you have a reprobated mind. You're exactly what Romans 1 is talking about. You're reading it, and right while you're reading it, you're looking right at the Bible telling you that homosexuality is wrong, and you're looking right at it and trying to be a professor, trying to be professional, trying to be articulate. And then you got... These other homosexuals got the, that have the nerve to try to, to, to uh, talk bad about the heterosexual man. You really can't say anything about anybody when you a man going with another man. That's the worst thing you can do. You're a woman going, you're retarded. You're walking backwards. It's like you just walking around backwards. So who's going to listen to you that has good sense? Because if anybody has any good sense, and they don't even have to be saved, they know that you came from a father and a mother, and it made you. Even you know that. You came from a father and a mother, and it made you. Those of you that have homosexual, and have, those of you that are homosexual and have uh, children, you, you knew it took a, a man and a woman. Even if you're homosexual, it took a man and a woman. So God's way is the right way, and it's never been man with man. It's never been woman with woman. And you know it, and you're a liar and the truth. And if you don't know, now you know. Now you can just say you rejected the truth. And, but isn't that what the Bible says in the last day? You're either a believer or a non-believer. Even if people say, I'm atheist. Well, when you're atheist, that means that you've been presented with God and you've been presented with the devil. You just chose not to make a choice, but you have made a choice. You still, the Bible got you. The Bible got you. You are unbeliever. See, when you say you're not, you don't believe in God or the devil, the Bible got you. The Bible puts you in a category of you're an unbeliever. That's what you are. You're an unbeliever. You're a Satan worshiper without admitting it. Those of you that are homosexuals and practicing homosexuality and saying you love Jesus and you love God, you're telling a lie. You're misguided and you're lying. And you, you're doing the work of Satan to bring the heterosexual community into your lifestyle. Because that's another thing about these men that's walking around talking about that they homosexual, but they don't like the feminine guy. No, you want to make the guys think that it's okay to be homosexual as long as you act masculine. That's what your deceit is. Your deceit is, is to, to give that message of Satan, to give the message of Satan, you can be homosexual, just don't act like a woman. Just don't act sissified. Yeah. Be macho. You got these jokers, some of them muscle bound and straight homosexuals talking about, and you can see it through some of them, that they sissify and they talk about, oh, I don't like the sissy. That ain't a slap in the face. You are homosexuals and you don't like a sissy? What are you? I'm not saying it to be rude. I'm telling you that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And your way of lifestyle, homosexuality, is demonic. Homosexuality is the Satan is Satan's love, not God's. It's Satan's love. You're not loving God. You're not even loving yourself. You don't love yourself nor God. You're slapping God. You're spitting on God. Now they say spitting is the worst thing to do. That somebody, like some people say, if you spit in their face, it's like you you deserve to be killed. Well, I, I don't. I'm not telling you to do. I'm not going to. I'm just saying it's just nasty. Your your nasty funky breath or what comes out of your stomach and you go. Like women do it, you're just gonna hawk and spit. That's what you're basically doing to God. You're spitting in God's face. You're spitting on. It's like you spitting, spitting right on your shirt. You you just spit on your pants, your shoes. 
That's not. It's nasty. It's totally nasty. Like I said, I'm not condoning any other sin, but we're going to talk about this homosexuality because y'all trying to preach, preach this, or message this, herald this, get to the heterosexual community that is all right. This is Satan. It's Satan's message. No. God said it's not good for man to be alone, and he made a woman. Now you got the homosexual say, well, if you're not supposed to be alone, so if you tell me that I can't be gay, I can't be a homo, and I don't like heterosexuals, I don't like women, I'm a man, but I don't like women, and I'm a woman, I don't like men, I only like the same sex, so you're telling me that I have to be celibate, I have to be alone? Yes. Ask God to straighten up your mind. You need deliverance. I don't even want to hear no educated homosexuals. I don't care how educated they are in other areas, but in that area, you just crazy. So if you can't admit that you, homosexuality is wrong, I don't want to hear about your other education or what you think about this, what you think about that. Get your mind right. Get your mind right. Get your mind right. Now, I mean, I can hear you talking about other stuff if you admit that homosexuality is wrong, but if you're going to tell me all these other educated things from A to Z, and you could be hitting on a thousand with it. I mean, you hitting the target. But yet you still turn around and say out of all that, oh, but it's right to be homosexual. No, that's, you say right thing to get me to go along with homosexuality. No, homosexuality is wrong. W-R-O-N-G. I don't care who is a homosexual. I can love the homosexual as a friend, neighbor, family member, but it's still wrong. And I would be less than a person with love in my heart to condone it and tell you you're right if you're wrong. You're wrong. And God is not condoning that. He's not condoning any sin. So every sin is supposed to repent, be sorry. But you're not sorry, are you? You're saying God made you. God didn't create you that way. That came from a fall. The Bible said in the beginning God made man and woman, male and female, crazy them. He put and he said the two shall be one. It's no way in the Bible that two men come together intimately or two women. You know it. You're trying to twist the Bible. And I just stopped by here for a few minutes to tell you homosexual is wrong. Homosexuality is wrong. And I didn't bash you. I didn't put you down. I told you these scriptures, Genesis 2.18, Leviticus 18 and 22, Leviticus 20 and uh, 13. Is it 13? Uh, wow. Let me see. Let me make sure because I want you to go. Yeah, 20 and 13. Yeah. First Romans chapter 1, verses 18 on. First uh, Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. The Bible is against homosexuality. If God, the Bible says in uh, Malachi 3 and 6, I am the Lord thy God, I change not. So God don't change. He made man and he made woman for man. You can try to change it. You can. You might as well get out of the Bible. If you're going to live a homosexual life, you might as well close up the Bible. Your God is Satan. Your God is not the God, Jehovah, Yahweh, Yahshua, through Jesus Christ, or none of whatever name is for him. It's not. It's not. not. You know what I mean? Now, let's go for those of you in my closing for say, well, that was under the law in Genesis, or don't forget Genesis chapter 19, where he told them, he gave them a chance to repent. Go get me 10 good men. I won't destroy the city. You couldn't find them. All of them gathered around Lot's house. Bring those angels out here. We want to have sex. We're going to rape them. Then they told Lot, we'll rape you. So now the homosexuals say, well, that was for rape. That wasn't for consensual Loneliness of man. Oh, Lord, help us. The blood of Jesus. Come on. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Whether you were born a homosexual, which means you were born in sin. So Jesus said you got to be born again. So whether you were born a liar, a thief, a fornicator, a luster. you got little boys and little girls that lust after uh, the opposite sex. You have little children. So it's in them. They learn to lie as little children. It's in them. You're born in sin, shaping in iniquity. 
Psalm 51 and 10. All have sinned, Romans 3 and 23, but the wages of sin is death, Romans 6 and 23. But the gift of God is eternal life. Come to Jesus. Repent of that homosexuality. Repent. Stop trying to act like homosexuality is wrong, is right. Stop trying to act like homosexuality is right and everybody is just putting you down. They don't love you. Try to beg for everybody's sens 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 sensitivity. If you want people to be sensitive for you, try to get out of the homosexuality. Don't try to stay in it. and want, That's just like staying a murderer and you want people to be sensitive. With, oh, I'm a, I'm a killer, but I want you to be sensitive. Of okay, your mother will be sensitive for it. Maybe your father, family members. But if they truly have the true word of God in them, they're they going to tell you the truth too. You're wrong. You're wrong. And if, it, your, if your mother, or father, your sister, your brother, your family, your friend is not telling the truth, either they don't know the truth, or they know the truth and live in a lie and don't care. True love tells the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Jesus never, you never told, saw Jesus and no way in the Bible condoning no same-sex relationship. It's wrong. So stop crying and trying to make people feel bad because they tell you the truth, trying to act like that's a great civil right. No, it's not a, a human right. You have the right to be treated fair as a human being. But homosexuality is a sickness. It's a retardation. It's a wrong that you need to right it. So just like you made up your mind that you want to be homosexual or you're going to continue being homosexual, you have the option also to change and work on change. Why is it that you don't know homosexuality is wrong? Even when you're looking at it in the book, what is it that's determined in your mind to try to make it, even when you read it in the Bible, saying it's wrong, telling you it's wrong, and you making all kinds of excuses, oh, no, that's not for today. No, you doing with just what the Bible said in the last days. They will fall away from the truth. First Timothy chapter 2, or Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, First Timothy chapter 4, Second Timothy chapter 4, you fall away from the truth, having a doctrine of a demon. The doctrine of demon. Homosexuality is the doctrine of demon. It's the demon love. And this demon love is really hatred. It's just hatred disguised as some kind of love. You love it. Satan's laughing you all the way to hell. Don't go to hell, beloved. Beloved man or woman, my dear beloved homosexual, in the name of Jesus, homosexuality is wrong. You know it. It's in the Bible. Close the Bible up if you're not going to believe the Bible. Second like I said, Genesis 2.18 says it's not good for man to be alone. Read from there. God made a woman, not a man for Adam. Genesis chapter 19, make the excuse you want. He destroyed for, for rape. And it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't even for the rape. Let's go to Genesis chapter 19 again. Lot offered his daughter. So homosexual, you can't even get away and say, well, no, that was rape. Not consensual homosexual. Because Lot offered his daughters. He said, you can rape my daughters. That's basically what he said. You can rape my daughters, but don't you men rape these men. You can rape my daughters. They've never been touched by a man. So I just see the spirit of the Lord just brought it. You can't say when you read Genesis chapter 19 that it was because of rape. Because Lot offered his daughters to the homosexual perverts. He said, you can have my daughters. They are virgins. They never knew a man. He was allowing them to be, he was going to allow them to be raped. A father giving up his pure daughter. To Ayashia, help me, Lord. The devil in you and is a liar. And it's not hatred for you, but it's hatred for that spirit that's the spirit of the devil to, de to deceive. See, and just as I was getting ready to close, God allowed me to say that, that no, don't you lie and say, oh, well, they was raped and that's why. No, because Lot offered his daughter. Now, he was a man of God. He would rather have seen them, and that's sick too, rape a woman, his virgin daughter, than rape the men. So don't you try to lie no more and say, well, no, in Genesis chapter 19, they were just raping each other. They, was, they wanted to rape. That's what made them wrong. No, that's not what it was. They were homosexual, men going with men. Romans chapter 1, one tells you why. Because they had a reprobate, God gave them over to a reprobated mind. 
They don't even want to hear the truth because they twisted the truth in the first place. Read Romans chapter 1, starting from verse 18. It said, this is what happened. The wrath of God came on you. So, you know what I mean? Now, I'm not saying every homosexual, that's what happened, but many of them, that's what happened to them. When they turn away from the truth, they get into unnatural things, and they just condone it as if, if it's right. But if you say you was born a homosexual, you could have been. A long time ago, I wouldn't have said that. I said, God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. But when Satan comes into your life, when Satan gets into the bloodline of a man producing a child into a woman, and the, the sin is in a woman, sin is in a man, yeah, you could have a, 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 a son with, with, with something wrong with him, a daughter with something wrong with him. I didn't come out of the womb wearing glasses. You don't see babies come out of the womb with, with, wearing glasses. So yes, there are physical defects, mental defects, spiritual defects. Economical defect. Sin has reached all of us in one way or another, and some of us in multiplicity of ways. I wasn't going to make this alone. So let's stop lying. Most Heavenly Father God, in the name of Jesus, save God, save us. Heterosexuals and homosexuals, save us. Save us. Bring us to the knowledge of the truth. Save us, God. Jesus Christ, you that sit on the right hand of majesty and power, save us. Let the hetero and the homosexual know. This is not about judgment. This is about the word of God. This is about educating in the spirit, exhorting, speaking, teaching, preaching, leading, guiding. Bind the hypocritical spirit that comes to lie and to twist the truth. Help us to come to the truth. Men and women, straight and gay, north and south, east and west, rich and poor, black and white, and everything in between, right and wrong. Help us to know you in the pardon of our sins, that we may be filled with your spirit and be filled with your righteousness and be saved and delivered and set free. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. This was for your edification, for the love of God and me to you. Stop saying that you love God and not even trying to come out of sin. That's not the love of God. That's the love of Satan. That's deception. That's lying at its highest level. At its highest level. I love God. I love Jesus. No, you don't. Jesus said, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. And Jesus doesn't like that. And neither does God. Read. Let me close out with this. I said I was gone. Romans chapter 10. Isaiah the prophet cried out concerning the Jews. That though there would be millions of them, only a small number would ever be saved. There are millions of people, but only a small number would be saved. For the Lord will execute his sentence upon the earth, quickly ending his dealings, justly cutting them short. And Isaiah says in another place that except for God's mercy, all the Jews would be destroyed, all of them just as everyone in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah perished. Well then, what shall we say about these things? Just this, that God has given the Gentiles the opportunity to be acquainted by faith, acquitted by faith, even though they had not been really seeking God. But the Jews who tried so hard to get right with God by keeping his laws never succeeded. Why not? Because they were trying to be saved by keeping the law and being good Instead of by depending on faith, they have stumbled over the great stumbling stone. God warned them of this in the scriptures when he said, I have put a rock in the path of the Jews, and many of them will stumble over him, which is Jesus. Those who believe in him will never be disappointed. You have to believe in God, and if you believe in God, you got to believe in Jesus. And that means you got to repent. Stop trying to justify. We can't justify ourselves. The law, the law. <laughs> Whether you go back in the 39 books of the Old Testament or the 27 books of the New Testament, the law has condemned you and I as sinners. If you were born in this world, you are classified as a sinner unless you're born of an exception. There could be an exception to the rule. But most of us were born sinners who have have to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and by repenting and acknowledging that our lifestyle is a sinning lifestyle and ask the Lord to help us to convert from the dirtiness and the sinness that's in our lives. Praise the Lord.
God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Hope you understand. So we can't justify ourselves under the law because Jesus came not to destroy the law but to fulfill it, meaning to do what the prophets and the teachers of that time could not do or in this time couldn't do. So Jesus fulfilled it, meaning that the law is going to, the part of the law that's going to play in your life is to show you what right and wrong is. That's what the law does. The law points to you and says, yeah, you should do this. You shouldn't do that. You should do, shouldn't be a homosexual, but you should be a heterosexual. Then if you're a heterosexual, you should be a one man woman, a one woman man. Not a man seeking after every woman he can get. Not a woman seeking after every man she can get. You see what I'm saying? So it condemns all of us under sin. Teaches us the right. Teaches where we're wrong at. And then Jesus Christ comes to forgive us and in Jesus through the power of the Holy Ghost helps us to do what we could not do in the flesh because our brain is not strong enough. The spirit in our, the world is always tugging at us this way or that way, tugging at us. But when Jesus comes, he comes to stable us and say, okay, I'm going to guide you. I'm gonna, oh, nope, maybe you need to turn a little bit over there. Oh, all right. All right, you know what I mean? I right, push over there. A little bit right there. You know what I mean? And try to get you right. You understand what I'm saying? Get you on course. But you're allowing Jesus to be the captain of your ship, males and females. All right, God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Amen. Love you in the name of Jesus Christ. I love you in the name of Jesus Christ. And this is why I tell you the truth. Somebody got to tell the truth. And the truth will make you free. John chapter 8. I think it's verse 31, 32, and then 35. To whom the Son sets free is free as he. Freedom is in the truth, not in homosexuality. That's not being free. You're bound. Satan got you bound. You're a man bound to the desires of another man that's not you think it's love that's not love it's satan's love though which is really hate and deception all right god bless you or should i say before i say god bless you god deliver you because god's not going to bless you if you're not delivered so you better ask god for his blessing pray to god god save me deliver even if you agree with homosexuals sexuality even if you don't think that i'm wrong you can't use the bible though and say it because then you're lying get on your knees and say god save me against myself even if i don't like what other people are saying to me even myself lord save me save me even if i don't agree with what he said about me or what she said about me or what they said about me i want to be saved i don't want to go to hell that's what you better get an attitude. Tell the Lord you don't want to go to hell. So if you need to be out of the mind state that you're in, maybe you can't see, you can't hear, you can't understand, because Satan has you. So what's wrong with asking God to deliver you just in case? God bless you. God deliver you to bless you. God save you to bless you. And if he saves you and deliver you, you are being blessed. You're blessed right now. 